Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about all of the books that I read in January. But before we get started, it's snowing and Joey's having a fit now. excited today for a couple of reasons. One, it's Monday and I'm off work because of President's Day, but two, it is pouring down snow outside and I'm so excited. Um, I always like to have one good snow a year and we are expecting about 10 inches and it is constantly coming down and there's a 100% chance of this all day. I will go ahead and insert a clip if I have not already. That way you guys can see what it looks like outside. I'm very excited. Other than that, it also provides pretty good lighting for filming because it's so white outside. So I decided that it was time for me to go ahead and sit down and film this because it is halfway through February and I still have not told you guys what I thought about all of the books I read in January. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. So in the month of January, I read 17 books. 16 of those were physical books and one of them was an audiobook. I read six adult books, two young adult, four middle grade. Here comes Toby. Hi, baby. He's wanting to play. <laughs> Anyways, I read three graphic novels, two manga, and then I read all of that across 3,940 pages. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in order according to the age group they're in. So we're going to go ahead and start with adult and young adult. So the first book that I read this year was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And I was really excited to read this book. I had heard nothing but good things about it. It was a lot of people's favorite book of 2020. And so I was really excited to pick this one up. So essentially what this is about is that there's a library between life and death. And in this library, there are an infinite number of books that represent an infinite number of lives that you could have lived had you, li had you made a different choice at any point in your life. And so we follow our main character, Nora, and she finds herself in this library and she has the opportunity to choose a different life for herself throughout these different books and she gets to see how things would have panned out had she made different choices. For example, one of the choices that she makes, and this might be a spoiler but it might not, it's the first thing that's in the book so if you don't want to know you can skip ahead just a little bit, but to me it's not a spoiler, it happens within the first few pages and so this is just one of the many things that Nora experiences. So one of the choices that she made in her original life was that she dropped out of her wedding two days before she got married. And so one of the choices that she makes is to go into a life where she didn't drop out of her wedding and she did end up marrying this guy and she gets to see how her life would have panned out that way. And there are a bunch of different things that she goes back and forth on. And the whole point is for her to find out what truly matters in life and what really matters to her. I thought this was a really good book. It wasn't anything that I felt like was extremely life-changing for me. I did feel like it had some good moral of the story type aspects in there, but I did find it a really good read. I did rate it four stars. I thought that it was interesting to follow Nora through this process in her life. And we do kind of all ask the question, what if? Like, what would my life be like if I would have made a different choice? Or what if this would have happened? Or what if that would have happened? So I find it very relatable in that aspect. And also this book explores mental health. I will go ahead and say that this could possibly trigger someone who struggles with mental health or has suicidal thoughts because Nora does experience this stuff as well. I feel like the representation for that was done really well in my experience as someone who struggles with anxiety and depression. And so I thought that was really well done and I could relate on that aspect as well. Once again, I don't feel like it was anything profound. This concept has been done before in multiple different books. I won't mention any of them here because I don't want to add any spoilers onto this book in case it might do that. But I do think this was a good read and I would recommend it to most people. I feel like most people would genuinely enjoy this and I'm really glad that I read it. The next book I forgot to grab but it's Across the Green Grass Fields by Shauna McGuire. This is the sixth book I believe in the Wayward Children series that I absolutely love. I have read all of them. They are basically novellas and they take place in different worlds and in our world and essentially what this series follows is a group of children who have found these different doorways so think like Narnia or Wonderland or things of that nature and these kids go through these different doors into these different lands that they feel like they belong in they feel very connected to these places but some way or another they end up being thrown back into the real world and they have to adjust back to real life but many of them want to go back to these worlds 
So many of these children end up in Eleanor West School for Wayward Children, which their parents, I believe, think is more like a mental facility for their children to kind of recuperate from whatever traumatic thing happened to them while they were gone. But actually, Eleanor West has herself been through a doorway and now she is helping these kids either to get back through their own doorways or to adjust back to the real world. So all of these books are fantastic. My favorites are Down Among the Sticks and Bones, which is the second book in the series, and In an Absent Dream, which I believe is the fourth book in the series. And those are my favorites. And I read Across the Green Grass Fields and I really loved it. All of these books have been four or five stars for me. Across the Green Grass Fields was a four star. And I also think it's a great book for you to start with if you want to start the series. I do think you can start with book one, book two, or this book, though I would recommend going ahead and starting with book one, which is Every Heart a Doorway. But you could start with Across the Green Grass Fields. This book follows our main character named Reagan. And Reagan goes into this world with all these equine creatures like um, Kelpies and unicorns and centaurs and all those different cool things. I really enjoyed this book and I thought it had really great representation because our main character is intersex. She has a female parts on the outside but on the inside she has male chromosomes so to me that was very interesting for to read from the perspective of that kind of character because I've never read from an intersex perspective before so that was also very informative and really interesting to read about I highly recommend this book and the series I gave across the green grass fields four stars and I just cannot wait until the next I think the next book is coming out she always releases them in January so January of 2022 which just seems like forever away, but I'm so excited to continue the series. And if you haven't picked it up yet, I do highly recommend because it is really great um, on the fantasy aspect, magical realism, and there's always great re representation in there as well. Next up, I read this young adult fantasy novel called Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. I read The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw last year in January, so it was fitting for me to read Winterwood this January. I really like Shay Earnshaw's writing. It's very immersive and atmospheric. That is one thing that I can always say she holds true to. This story follows another main character named Nora, which seems to be a popular name in some books recently. Um, and Nora in this story is a witch and she lives near the Winterwood. And the Winterwood has been in Nora's family for generations. And the connection between Nora's family and the Winterwood has been there for generations. And one day, Nora comes to the woods and she finds the body of Oliver Huntsman, who is a boy who was at this boys camp and disappeared for two weeks. And she's now found him and he is actually alive. So the fact that one, he has been alive through a blizzard that has been taking place in this book, but also in the winter wood is just kind of unbelievable. But here he is. And so she is now trying to figure out how Oliver made it all this time and why he's still alive, why the forest chose to keep him and all of these different things. This is a really cool witchy magical atmospheric read and like I said the main thing that gets me with Shay Earnshaw's writing is the atmosphere. It did take me a little bit to get into this story like I didn't have a problem wanting to pick it up it's just it was kind of slow at times and in the end I kind of saw coming just a little bit but not really like I didn't exactly know how everything was playing out but I still really enjoyed this read and I gave it three and a half stars so I would recommend this I do think it's above average and as far as the content and I haven't read anything like this before and I will definitely pick up more from Shay Earnshaw in the future. The next book I read is The Push by Ashley Audrain and you guys may have been seeing this book everywhere like I have I had not heard a single bad thing about this book and then I read it and I will say that I'm the unpopular opinion here and I did not like this book. The Push is a book that has been said to be great for fans of the book Baby Teeth um, but also fans of the movie The Good Son with Macaulay Culkin and Elijah Wood. I had not read Baby Teeth or seen The Good Son, but the concept of the push really intrigued me. It's about this woman named Blythe, and Blythe is determined that she will be a better mother than her mother was to her, and her mother's mother was to her, and she wants to be a good mother to her daughter, Violet. But Violet seems to be kind of off as a baby and as a young child. She just doesn't seem to be like a normal child. And so Blythe keeps telling her husband Fox that she thinks that Violet might be evil or might there might be something wrong there. And Fox just tells her it's all in her head. So, so of course Blythe starts to wonder if she is going insane. And then she ends up having a baby named Sam. And she finally gets the connection with Sam that she always wanted with Violet, but she never had. Even Violet seems to have taken a liking to Sam. However, tragedy then strikes and Blythe will have to then face the truth of what is happening. And so this story, 
what can I say? I will start out with the good things. Ashley Audrain is a phenomenal writer. This was her debut novel, and I do think she did a really good job of presenting herself in the book world really well. I do think that I will pick up books from her that she writes in the future, so long as they do not deal with the subject matter, because this was just not for me. It was very uncomfortable and very soul-sucking and very depressing, and I did not like it in the least bit, and I tried to like it, but it made me just, and I know it's supposed to make you uncomfortable, so some people may enjoy this, but I didn't like it, and I think I also went into it expecting it to be a thriller, and it was more of a suspense, but I also found that very predictable. Like, I knew everything that was going to happen. Like, I knew the thing that happened in the middle. I knew that was going to happen, which I feel like I was kind of spoiled for that because people were saying trigger warnings for if this makes you uncomfortable, um, and I feel like that trigger warning kind of gave away that part, but I, I kind of inferred that that was going to happen anyways. So either way, and then like something else happened later on in the story, and I just, it didn't surprise me. And so I guess I just wanted to be more surprised. And so I was really let down and I felt like it was a waste of time for me to read it because it just sucked the soul right out of me. Um, now, like I said, this is my personal opinion. I know that most people love this book and most people would really enjoy it. And I do think it was written well and Ashley Audrain is a good writer. Most of my qualm with this book was the subject matter, but also again, it was very predictable. So I feel like it was kind of a combination of those things that knocked my rating down. I gave this book a two and a half star and I know somebody's gonna be upset about that, but I do want to say, I do think Ashley Audrain is a good writer and I will read more from her, but this book was just not for me. On a lighter note, I also read The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. This is a book that I have seen occasionally on BookTube and Bookstagram, and a couple of my friends had read this book and had been recommending it to me, and so I decided that it was time that I picked it up since it was winter time and I wanted to get to it pretty quick before the season ended. This book was such a pleasant surprise for me. I did not know whether or not I was going to like it because I knew that it was a historical book that had a mystery and a supernatural aspect and I thought that it was going to be written more like literary which kind of intimidates me because I don't usually read literary books but the writing oh my gosh Jennifer McMahon like her writing is so immersive and atmospheric and detailed and good. It's one that you have to pay attention to, but it's really, really good. And oh my goodness, like I gave it four and a half stars. I didn't even give it five, but like this is probably going to be like one of my favorite books of the year because it was so, so good. So essentially this book goes back and forth between 1908 and then present day. I want to go ahead and read the synopsis on the back to you because it's kind of confusing to try to explain it, but I'm hoping the synopsis will be enough to sell you. West Hall, Vermont has always been a town of strange disappearances and old legends. The most mysterious is that of Sarah Harrison Shea, who in 1908 was found dead in the field behind her house just months after the, after the tragic death of her daughter. Now in the present day, 19-year-old Ruthie lives in Sarah's farmhouse with her mother, Alice, and her younger sister, Fawn. Alice has always insisted that they live off the grid, a decision that has weighty consequences when Ruthie wakes up one morning to find that Alice has vanished. In her search for clues, she is startled to find a copy of Sarah Harrison Shea's diary hidden beneath the floorboards of her mother's bedroom. As Ruthie gets sucked into the historical mystery, she discovers that she's not the only person looking for someone they've lost, but she may be the only one who can stop history from repeating itself. Oh, this book, this book, just everything, everything. The writing, the characters, the atmosphere, just like everything, everything. This book had everything. It was perfect. I know I said I gave it four and a half stars and that's only because at the end there were a couple questions that weren't answered. They weren't things that really bothered me. I know some books leave off like if you read Wilder Girls, that ending made me very angry because I didn't know enough. Like I needed to know more before it ended. This is not the same case for me as that one. This one just left a couple of questions that I could infer how it would have ended and you can kind of see how it probably did. Um, but yeah, this book was just wild. Like, so many things happened that I didn't expect. There was a twist. Um, it was creepy, though. Like, I didn't know if I was going to like it at first. The first, I don't even know, like, maybe half of the book, I was super creeped out, and I wanted to read it. Like, I kept wanting to pick it up, and I would pick it up, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is super creepy. So, it is very creepy. Keep that in mind, and there's some things in there that are very, like, I don't even know what to say. Like, supernatural, creepy, maybe witchcrafty, but, like, it's so good. It's so good. And I was so surprised. And I think being surprised by a book helps you love it even more when you're not expecting to love it as much as you did. So The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon is definitely a book that I would highly recommend. So after reading The Winter People, I decided that I wanted to pick up more Jennifer McMahon. 
but I did not have time to read a full book and so I decided to listen to the short story on audio of Hannah Beast. Now, I think that if Jennifer McMahon is going to write, it needs to be a whole story because I just didn't enjoy this one as much and I think part of it was the narrator for the audiobook. She was just really annoying and I'm not going to say who the narrator was. I'm not even sure who the narrator was, but it was very annoying and it followed a group of teenage girls and essentially what happened was there was this one girl who was bullied and she went out one Halloween night with some other girls who had bullied her but convinced her to go out and some stuff ends up happening and there becomes a legend of Hannah Beast and so kids nowadays dress up as Hannah Beast and Hannah Beast was just this girl named Hannah that got bullied. That was her costume that she wore the night that some tragedy happened and so now kids dress up as Hannah Beast and it goes back and forth between what the things that happened with Hannah and then current day things that are happening um, on Halloween. And it was really short. It was only like, it's like a 40 or 50 page book, but I listened to it on audio and it took me maybe an hour and a half to read it. Possibly maybe an hour, maybe 45 minutes. I have no idea, but it didn't take me very long at all to read it. Um, there was a twist and I didn't see the twist coming. I don't really think I saw it coming. But it was good, but the narrator killed it for me, and it was very juvenile, I feel like. Um, it was dealing with teenage high school girls, and I think maybe that's just not my vibe. So I only rated it two and a half stars. Or no, not even two and a half stars. I rated it two stars because it just really annoyed me. But I feel like if it would have been a whole book that I would have enjoyed it better. Um, that is not to say I'm bashing Jennifer McMahon because, like I said, I love her. I just didn't like that audiobook. But I am excited to read other books by her. She has a book coming out later this year that I'm excited to read. I can't remember the name of it. And then I also want to read The Invited and The Night Sister because I've heard good things. So I'm not giving up on Jennifer McMahon. I just did not like this audiobook. Next, I read Get Out of Your Head, Stopping the Spiral of Toxic Thoughts by Jenny Allen. This is a book that I had been seeing around a lot, and as someone who deals with mental health and negative thinking and toxic thoughts, I thought this would be a great book for me to read. And it is also from a Christian perspective, and as a Christian, I always like for my self-help books to kind of have that element in there because a lot of my life is based off of that, and that is how I live my life, and so I prefer that to be kind of interweaved into my self-help self -help books. So keep that in mind if you do feel interested in reading this it does come from a christian perspective i really enjoyed the book i thought that some of the ideas had been things that had been explored before but you get that sometimes with all of these books but it was a very good reminder for me of things that i already knew and then it told me a couple of new practical tools that i can use to help out with my mental health and learn how to control my thoughts better and renew my mind daily and I thought it was very helpful and a huge chunk of it was just about knowing that you have a choice and so I really enjoyed that book. I gave it four stars. I didn't think like I said it wasn't like the best book I've ever read but I feel like a lot of self-help books for me are about four stars just because that's the reality of it. Um, I don't know that I've ever read a book like that that has been five stars but if this is something that interests you I do think it would be a good book to try out. Next up, I read Five Total Strangers by Natalie D. Richards. This is a young adult mystery thriller novel. Um, it says she should have, she never should have accepted that ride. I initially picked this book up because it reminded me of the book No Exit by Taylor Adams, which I really enjoyed. And this book is about a girl named Mira and Mira needs to get home for the holidays, but there's an incoming blizzard and her flight gets canceled. And so there are a couple people that were on this flight with her that she ends up hitching a ride with to get home because her mother is in a state of grieving and she is trying to get home to her for the holidays. And so Mira takes a ride with these strangers and treachery just seems to follow them everywhere. And it would also seem that there is someone in this car who is dead set on them not getting to their destination. So this was a very interesting book. It's very suspenseful and I found myself always wanting to pick it up. I really enjoyed the writing. This is my first night of Lady Richards. It will not be my last. I do think it was very unpredictable. Now, I will say that I never guessed who was sabotaging everything because the book did a very good job of going around to all the different people in the car and making you question every single one of them. So, I did not know until the very end who was causing all of the problems. However, I will say that it wasn't one of those endings that just made me like catch my breath. Like it wasn't shocking because I suspected everybody, if that makes sense. But it was really good. It was unpredictable. But I think this is a great wintry read, especially if you like me are experiencing a blizzard outside. This is a great one to pick up. Um, it's very good. And like I said, it will not be my last night, Lady Richards. I didn't think it was like the best book I ever read, but I did really enjoy it. So I gave it three and a half stars. 
Next up, I'm going to talk about some of the middle grade books that I read. And the first one is Dead Voices by Katherine Arden. I read Small Spaces by Katherine Arden last fall and I really loved it if you remember it all. It was the book that I said spooked me because it literally spooked me and it creeped me out and I'll never look at a scarecrow the same way again. It was such a creepy book. This is the second book in that series so it follows the same characters and this time the characters are going to this man it's not a mansion it's like a hotel it's like a ski lodge that's what it is. Um, it's been a second. It's a ski lodge. They're going to the ski lodge and it actually used to be an old orphanage slash school and some pretty sketchy things happened there. And so now we've got a bit of a ghost story here and it's super interesting. I really enjoyed this book. I don't have a lot to say about it, but I gave it five stars. Katherine Arden is a great middle grade writer and I cannot wait to continue the series. She has another one coming out called Dark Waters and I'm so excited to read that one. I don't know. There's just she has a way of like really bringing the atmosphere. The characters are really well done, but like the atmosphere also just really brings you in and makes you chilled to the bone. So I think this is a great wintry read if you are looking to pick a middle grade up during the season. Next up, I read Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. I actually did not read this version of Anne of Green Gables. I read the Great Illustrated Classics edition from my library, which I later found out was a condensed version, but I absolutely loved it. So I bought this beautiful Puffin and Bloom edition and I plan to reread it again later this year. So I, oh gosh, it's so beautiful. If you have not seen the Puffin and Bloom editions, like they are just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really excited to get through the whole Anne story later this year, but I did read, like I said, I did read Anne. So I'm counting this as a read, but also like I'm gonna read it again, the full version. I uh, don't have a lot to say about it. It's a good story and it was one that I didn't expect to love because I thought it would just be very plain Jane, if that makes sense. I didn't feel like there was going to be anything that just made me want to pick it up, but I absolutely loved it. If you don't know the story of Anne, I would highly recommend checking it out. It is a great children's classic and I'm really excited to read this whole story. I gave the Great Illustrated Classics Edition five stars and I'm sure that will be the same whenever I pick up the Puffin and Bloom Edition. Next up, I read Odd and the Frost Giants by Neil Gaiman and this was illustrated by Chris Riddell. I love the pairing of Neil Gaiman's writing with Chris Riddell's illustrations. It's just always super well done. And I'm on a mission to read all of Neil Gaiman's middle grade books because I love them. I do love a couple of his um, adult books like Good Omens and The Ocean at the End of the Lane is one of my all-time favorites. And Coraline is one of my all-time favorite middle grades in case you didn't know that if you're new here. But I did want to read Odd and the Frost Giants. This is a great edition. I really loved this book. I thought it was well done. I do think obviously it's geared towards middle grade so it did not have the little extra stuff that I wanted, but I thought it was really good and I would recommend it. I think kids would love this. It follows Odd. Odd gets tangled up with some Norse gods and he is trying to save Asgard from the Frost Giants and it's a great story. Um, I gave it three stars and I would recommend it. The last middle grade that I read was Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. This is the second book in the Cassidy Blake series and I had to read this one before Bridge of Souls comes out in March, which I'm so stoked about. This is a great series. And one thing that I really love about it is the history and the legends that go behind these stories. So if you don't already know, this series follows a girl named Cassidy Blake who had a near-death experience and now she can see through the veil or see ghosts and she has a ghost best friend that actually saved her from her near-death experience and his name is Jacob. Funnily enough, her parents are ghost hunters but they cannot see ghosts and they do not know that Cassidy can. So her parents have been hired to do this TV series where they go to the most haunted places in the world. The first place that they go in City of Ghosts is Edinburgh, Scotland, and in this book, they go to Paris, France. Cassidy ends up getting tangled up with some pretty crazy ghosts in both of these books, and I just find that the story is really adventurous and fun and spooky, and I really liked it. And another thing that I really like about these books that come with the paperbacks, so hang tight and let me show you that. So this is City of Ghosts, and in the paperbacks, the back includes the um, author Q&A and photos, and so I really liked learning about that. And then also it talks about like how in this book, Victoria Schwab lives in Edinburgh, Scotland, where, it take, um, where the story takes place. And it shows pictures of all of the different places that are talked about in the story. And it only does this in the paperback versions. I really wish it did it in the hardcover versions as well, because I think it's really fascinating to see like the actual places 
that Cassidy visits. So I do plan on, this is hardback, I do plan on getting the paperback of this because it will include all that fun stuff. So I do highly recommend this series if you have not read it before. It is fantastic. I love Victoria Schwab and I love this middle grade series. Cannot wait for Bridge of Souls to come out. I'm super excited about that. So I would highly recommend this. I gave City of Ghosts five stars and Tunnel of Bones four and a half. Next, I want to talk about the three graphic novels that I read. So the first one is Suey and the Shadow by Ginger La and illustrated by Molly Park. This book just looked like a creepy read and I'm always there for the creepy reads, especially graphic novels that are creepy. And this story follows Suey Lee and she is 12 years old and she ends up going into this exhibit room and having this really weird experience and then now she has this shadow that can talk and move outside of herself and so this is a really creepy story and it also deals with different types of characters with bullies with people who are very quiet and kind of passive which is very much like how Suey is and yeah I thought this was an interesting book. I had never heard anything like it before, so I do think it was interesting. But overall, in the grand scheme of things and like of other graphic novels that I've read, it wasn't my favorite, but I do think it was good and I would recommend it to anyone who likes creepy graphic novels and I rated this one three stars. Next, I read One Year at Ellesmere by Faith Erin Hicks. I decided to pick this one up because I really liked Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. I loved Faith Erin Hicks illustrations and so I knew I wanted to pick up something else with her illustrations in it as well. And this one she actually wrote and it is about this girl who goes to this boarding school and she faces some bullies. She makes some friends. There's also a little magical spin on it at the end and I just thought it was a really good book. I don't have a lot to say about it but I will say that I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. If you are looking for a boarding school middle grade read that deals with real life problems but also has a little bit of a magical spin on it, I do think this is a good one. I think they're going to make this into a series and if they're not, I would be highly disappointed because I definitely want to get back in with these characters and the setting. I gave the book four stars and I would recommend it for anyone looking to read a good middle grade graphic novel. The last graphic novel that I read was Witches of Brooklyn by Sophie Escabase and this book was so good. I am so glad that Amanda from The Curly Reader talked about this because I don't know if I would have picked it up otherwise. I do like witchy books but for some reason I was just never drawn to the cover of this one. But Amanda raved about it and said it was really good and so I picked it up and now I'm so excited to read the rest of the series because they are making it a series and the first one was so so good. It has a magical aspect and it also has like the realistic stuff too. I love when a book combines magical whimsical things with real life topics as well. So in this book it deals with when someone you admire or look up to lets you down and how you can still support the art without supporting the artist. I thought that was a great topic and very applicable to life right now and things that are going on in the world. But this is about our main character who is a witch and she ends up being an orphan and moving in with her aunts, I believe it is, it's some relatives. And they don't really want to take her in, but they take her in. And the main, like, aunt or grandma figure, she is so funny. And the banter between her and our main character is so great. I think it's a great book. I gave it five stars. I'm really excited to continue it. And if you are looking for, once again, a great middle grade graphic novel with witchy, whimsical, but also real life applicable things, this is a great book to pick up. And lastly, I read two manga this month, so I can thank Olivia from Liv's Library for reintroducing me to manga. I had tried The Promised Neverland, and while I didn't think it was bad, I just wasn't vibing with it, and I think I can appreciate things, but realize that some things aren't for me, and that was one of those things. So I was like, well, I guess I just don't like manga, and I've never really liked anime much. I grew up watching Pokemon. I'd watched some other things here and there, but I just never really vibed with much, and so... I didn't think that I liked manga, but then I read The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe. I read volumes one and two, and I'm really loving this series. I'm so excited to continue. I actually have volume three with me that I plan on reading this month in February. And I don't really know how to explain what it's about. It's about this, the insiders and the outsiders, and the insiders are just imagine like regular people. And there's this little girl who gets left behind when the outsiders come into the inside and the insiders go out or something to that effect. And this little girl is left behind. And when I say little girl, I mean, she is a small child. And there is this outsider that is taking care of her. She calls him teacher. 
and he looks like this big, like they look like they have bird faces and goat horns or something to that effect. And he tells her, do not touch me. He's taking care of her, but he says, you can't touch me and I can't touch you or you will be cursed. So I'm still kind of figuring out what is going on in the backstory behind, of all, behind all of this. You don't really get all the answers at first, but I'm excited to continue this manga and I've decided to pick up some more so you can hear about those in my February wrap up. All right, y'all, that is all for today. These are all of the books that I read in January. Let me know if you have ever read any of these books and what you thought of them down in the comments. And also let me know what your favorite read of January was. I would really like to know. And I just wanted to say once again, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Your support means so much to me. I love you all so, so much. And don't forget before you leave to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications anytime I post a new video and also hit the like button. I love you all so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.